I have everything that I want from it, and the things that I don't have, I don't think I want anyways. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to another Bundle Banter! That's right, Humble Bundle has dropped the Digital Tabletop 2 Bundle, so we'll see if it's any good. This bundle's not particularly my style, but that's just an opinion. In the $1 tier, we have Gremlins Inc., we have Reigns, and we have Reigns Her Majesty. In the Beat the Average tier, we have Terraforming Mars, Armello, and For the King. All very good games. And then, in the $10 tier, we have... Da, 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 Slay the Spire. Which is a fantastic game that I put about 40 hours into, and they just released a new character completely for free. Definitely a cool game to pick up. But is it worth it for $10? Let's take a look at these games. Gremlins Inc. is a pretty decent game. I really, really like the aesthetic. That's the reason that I decided to pick it up way before this bundle, and I have actually played it before. It's not great when playing against the computer, but if you have friends to play with, it's really, really nice. Uh, obviously, with Gremlins comes to mind a little bit of mischievousness, a little antagonistic gameplay, and a lot of the games reflect that. You can take things from other players a lot of the time, and if that mischievousness is spread around, then that's great, but one player can definitely get ganged up on, especially if they're in the lead, and they're not going to have a good time. If you're playing against the bots, you can't really reason with them or anything. If they decide to pick on you, then there's not a whole lot that can be done about it, and I understand why that would be frustrating for some players. But overall, I think the game is exceptionally decent. The gameplay is also a little slow, which you definitely feel when playing with the AI. Again, with friends, you guys have your banter going and you don't really need to worry too much about it. Picking it up for 30 cents, I mean, who can really sneeze at that? I like it, overall. Reigns is a very simple, very tiny, sort of cheap game from Devolver Digital. It's got Tinder controls, basically. You swipe left or right to make certain decisions. There are four meters that go up and down based on those decisions. And if one of the meters gets completely empty or completely full, then your game is over. But don't worry, you get to jump back in as another king and try again. Some of the events are exceedingly rare. Some of the events I've seen a hundred times before. I used to play this on my phone quite a little bit around last year, but it has fallen by the wayside since then. It's a fun roguelike, despite its extreme simplicity. It's pretty short if you know what you're doing. And yeah, who doesn't like to lord over a kingdom? That's that's a great selling point. I like that a lot. For 30 cents, yeah, I, I'd say pick it up. It's probably better on mobile. I don't see myself sitting down at my desktop in order to play Reigns, but you, you get what you get, you know? I'm sure it might be pleasing to some people who are in the mood for a game without too much gameplay investment. Reigns Her Majesty, it's largely the same thing, except you've turned from your lordship into your ladyship. There is also a bit more content, it is an expansion of sorts. Overall, the game didn't interest me too much, it's basically just a gender swap, so whoop de doo and I've had about enough of the original Reigns game when this one came out, so I gave it a skip even on my phone, it doesn't interest me even now. For 30 cents, I could be convinced to pick it up, I guess. I don't really see the point because, as I said, it's something that I, I definitely don't think really would belong on a desktop. But then, maybe I'm just being a purist. Anyways, that's the $1 tier. Uh, all kind of okay, just middling, if you ask me. For 30 cents, yeah, I like it, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to pick the game up just, just based on that. Gremlins Inc. is probably the only one out of the $1 tier that I would actually end up playing on my desktop. And even then, I am a solo player, so it would probably be a very hurdy experience. We'll move on to the Beat the Average games. Terraforming Mars actually does have a physical board game version that this game is based on. And if you want me to tell the truth, you should probably just go buy the physical version of it to play with your friends. You can play against the AI here, which is okay, I guess, but it does have a lot of troubles. The AI will play a card that affects building tags, and then after they're done playing that card, they'll play one of the tag buildings. So it's like, why didn't you play the tag building first? Because the programming is a little bit off in this game. Maybe you decide that you're tired of the dumb AI in this game, and you decide to hop online for a match. Well, the turn timer is 
absolutely forked in this game. <laughs> if somebody decides to walk away, they can basically AFK for an hour and waste your time. And only after that hour expires will their turn timer be like, oh, I guess they forfeited. Finally. What the fuck? That is super frustrating. The game has mixed reviews on Steam, and I can definitely see that for a reason. The original board game is definitely worth playing. It's a decent thing. It's it's just a shame that the port didn't go so well. So I would I would give this one an easy skip. It's not in my library currently. I haven't seen it in a bundle before, but I, I don't plan to pick it up. Armello is a super cool board game. <laughs> on the on the opposite end of the spectrum, Armello is fucking fantastic. You basically play uh, one of eight characters from four different clans, at least if you're playing in the base game, there are expansions for it. But these characters can collect items, spells, and skills, and use them all against each other in order to meet one of the four win conditions. One of which is defeating the king, second is having the highest amount of honor, third I think is having the highest amount of corruption, or something like that. And then the, the last one is collecting four orbs which then are used to uh, defeat the king. Some characters are significantly better at things than others. The wolf clan is super good at fighting. The bear clan, super tanky. Rabbit clan, they're great at using items. Rat clan, super sneaky. And I really like the different styles of gameplay that that offers. When you start the game, you're given a quest. You complete these quests to get a little bit of honor and an extra item and the chance of success of those quests is based on your stat. Now despite my love for this game, there are some downsides that people have pointed out. The animations are quite heavy, it takes quite a little while to get everything started, but I don't really tend to feel it because the animations are super pretty. Even when I'm playing against the AI, it feels like everything's moving forward at a, about a normal pace, at least to my tastes. The other thing I see complained about fairly regularly is the RNG. You're basically rolling dice to make attacks and defense and you can really get screwed <laughs> sometimes. If you're simply not getting the dice rolls that you need then you can lose even if your stats are superior and you're more prepared for battle. You can still get taken down but that kind of makes it more intriguing to me. I've spent about 20 hours playing Armello and I'm sure I'll come back to it at some point. Maybe I'll even spring for the DLC at some point, although it hasn't been discounted enough on a sale for me to quite jump into that yet. One last thing to note is that this game can only be played with four players. So if you want to go 1v1 with a friend, it's not going to happen. You got to throw a couple of bots in there. So that might be a downside for some, but honestly, I don't think the game would play as well with only two people on the board. Overall, a really cool game. I've probably gone on enough about it, but yeah. If you like the rest of the stuff in this pack, then I wouldn't hesitate to check out Armello as well. For the King is another fantastic tabletop game. It's a roguelike, which I definitely lean towards as far as my, my tastes and preferences go. I don't always play board games, but when I do, they are roguelikes. <laughs> if you're into roguelikes, if you're into D&D, then you're probably going to like For the King. There are different team makeups and class pickings that will keep you thinking about the game, even while you're not currently playing it, and I think that's really awesome. The game is definitely great by yourself, but even more than that, it is especially intriguing if you get some co-op players. The RNG can be a little brutal, as in most games, but if you can overcome, then you'll get that real sense of achievement and accomplishment, or whatever the fuck that EA was talking about. So, a relatively decent tier for Beat the Average. Two out of three? That ain't bad. I'll take that, I guess. I mean, not literally take it, because I already got the two games that I want. But still, it's not bad. <laughs> so, let's look at the final tier. Slay the Spire. Is it worth being the crown jewel of this bundle? The answer to that question, of course, is unequivocally yes. <laughs> if you enjoy roguelikes, if you enjoy deck building, this one is more card-based. The other ones really felt like a board game. This one just feels like building up a deck of cards, although I guess there is a, a board. You do travel through the dungeon. I think whether you like this or not is largely a matter of taste. I've met people that love it, like myself, and swear by it and want to play it even more all the time. And I've also met people that say it's boring as shit, so... <laughs> Take from that what you will. Is it worth $10? If you're in the States, I would say probably so. It's retailing for $24.99 according to SteamPrices.com. If you're in the Philippines, it's quite a different story. 
Philippines can pick up this game for 549 pesos, so basically $11, which still makes it a decent bundle, but not something that I'd spring for necessarily, especially with my lack of interest in most of the other games on desktop. So overall, is it a decent bundle? Only if you enjoy board games. I think for the average person who enjoys a shoot 'em up, they're they're not going to go for this. My wife, who enjoys mostly action-oriented stuff, she would absolutely hate this bundle. My kids would hate this bundle. I can sort of get behind it, but not for every game that's in it, so I don't know. This is not meant to knock Humble Bundle at all, because whenever they put out a game bundle, I'm super excited, no matter what it is, because I want to see them putting out more game bundles <laughs> instead of all these these ebooks that you can basically find for free anyways. So if you don't have Slay the Spire yet, 10 bucks isn't that much to ask. You get a bunch of other games with it, so that's kind of nice. If you do have Slay the Spire, I guess Beat the Average might be worth it for Armello and for the King. The $1 tier, I, I really wouldn't say that that's worth it, necessarily. Then again, it is just a dollar. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to argue with that. But yeah, a rather disappointing bundle overall, and one of the first in this bundle banter series that I will be skipping over completely. I have everything that I want from it, and the things that I don't have, I don't think I want anyways. So, if you pick it up, do let me know. If you don't pick it up, also let me know. Why did you pick it up? Why did you not pick it up? I'm curious. You know, we're, we're trying to gather some data, but this is the sort of data mining that's for my own personal use. I won't be selling it to Google or anybody else, <laughs> like, uh, like all these other tech companies. Oh, those tech companies, you know them. I think Humble's becoming one of them. But that's neither here nor there. Let me know what you thought, friends. Don't forget to like, comment, and to subscribe on this video. I would appreciate that a whole heck of a lot. Also, check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Huge shout out to Nico the Legend for supporting us on Patreon. Huge shout out to Emily Goldberg for alerting me of this bundle. Uh, it completely passed me by somehow, so that's why the video is a little bit late. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Anyways, friends, this has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. See you again. Goodbye, goodbye. See you, my friends. <laughs>